In Charlottesville, Virginia, the white supremacist chickens came home to roost and rallied to claim the public space Trump had promised them as he let them out and loose on the country during his campaign. He had reinforced them with his attacks on people of color, Muslims, immigrants, women, the poor, and those similarly vulnerable, and reassured them that once elected, he would continue with racist appeals and at right appointments, outright appointments. They came claiming they were helping Trump keep his promise to take back America and make it great again. A dog whistle and a racial code for making it more white dominant and differential again. That already is what's going on. Good morning, I'm Ed James and this is Black Almanac. They chanted about blood and soil, arrogantly, ignorantly, and racistly, claiming the land that for themselves, their kind, a land with every inch, deeply stained with the blood of the Native American genocide and the holocaust of African American enslavement. And they argued that they and their Confederate flag, statues, and monuments would be replaced. After all, their man was in the White House, and white dominance and deference would be the order of the day and life once again. Thus, we must all fight on every front. For as Paul Robinson stated in the early period of the rise of fascism, the battlefront is everywhere and there is no sheltered rear. Indeed, as Harry Truman taught us, our people and our role is not to seek individual escape and a comfortable place in oppression. It is to turn around and face the enemy and fight the struggle to achieve freedom and flourishing for all. Joining today's discourse, political analyst Dr. Lawrence A. Miller with earnest and intelligent analysis. Dr. Miller, um, since you were last here, I don't think things got better on the federal <laughs> scene with our president. They only got worse. So it would seem, um, and thank you for having me on your show again. Uh, it seems as though the president had a nice rally out in uh, Phoenix, and uh, that rally, he talked about two senators uh, of that particular state. He talked about Jeff Flake and um, John, McCain. John McCain. And what he had to say about the two of them uh, was really uh, hitting below the belt yeah. uh, in the sense that Jeff Flake, even though he voted for uh, the uh, provision that they were talking about as far as the Senate uh, mm -hmm. bill revolving around health care is concerned. To his own peril. President Trump mm -hmm. went ahead and called him weak on the borders and weak as far as the economy is concerned, taxes. And, and do nothing, nobody knows nothing. him. Nobody knows him. And then he had even more disparaging things to say about John McCain, a war hero, right, mm -hmm. who he called a loser. So it's interesting to see these people uh, cheering and yelling in the background while the same guy that they're cheering and, and yelling for is tearing his own party apart. Now, he one day says these nice things in terms of bringing the country together, then he says some of these dastardly things in terms of um, Charlottesville, giving mm -hmm. his own version of it. And then he goes ahead the next day at the veterans mm -hmm. and has something else to say that's from a good perspective. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he's tweeting that these people, again, naming them by name this time, uh, are dastardly people and, and holding up his agenda. Yeah. This Thursday, he decided to do what he called fun with the eclipse. <laughs> and he had uh, a photo, and he tweeted a photo of President Obama and him mm -hmm. coming from uh, black to light. Right. And saying that, uh, but th that was a good eclipse. Because <laughs> right, right. It brought him. Oh. Yeah, he, had, he is obsessed with Obama. 
I, 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 I'd never seen anything like this in presidential history. And to have this person continually bashing his predecessor, right, uh, doesn't bode well for the country. Because you had a president talking about President Obama who people supported. Mm -hmm. You are now the president of the United States for everybody, not just your constituency. You're not always in campaign mode. You're supposed to be trying to bring people together. He is always in campaign mode. That's what Phoenix was all about. Mm -hmm. And he had two of his favorite Negroes there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ben Carson and the other guy they called the black man. Right. And for folk who maybe don't look at that foolishness, mm -hmm. um, the black man is always behind Trump right shoulder yes in a t-shirt that uh trump and the republican party are not racist exactly now and it's interesting he's all over the country mm -hmm. even though they say they have nothing to do with it right but there was also a picture of him at mar-a-lago mm -hmm. with his arms around the shoulder of our governor, and the governor and the governor saying, "You did a good job in supporting Trump." That old expression, "When you lay down with dogs, you come up with fleas." Yes. Now, I'm not saying that the black man is a dog, mm -hmm. and I'm saying the black man because that's what they call him. Mm -hmm. He has a name, right? But he has a terrible history too. Mm -hmm of being anti many things. Right. And among those things that he's anti, had been anti, and leads a movement, anti-white. And they get so comfortable with him. Who knows? One day, he may listen to this rhetoric, he may shift back to his old self <laughs> and hurt the president. Or, as you said earlier when we were talking, hurt some of the media since Trump is always bashing the media. Yeah, there's no telling what might happen at one of these meetings in terms of uh, the media is concerned because he's always saying that the media uh, is uh, bad and dastardly and the fact that they don't uh, want to make America great again. Uh, they're just bad people. Uh, that sets an atmosphere of um, basically hatred for mm -hmm. the media. Me and that's a bad thing uh, because our country is founded on the Bill of Rights and part of that has to do with the free press. Mm -hmm. Where would we be now if mm -hmm. there wasn't a free press? Exactly. Uh, we would think that everything was all right with Trump and Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia. Yes. Russia. <laughs> we talk about Russia. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, uh, Dr. Ben Carson was there and I don't, and back to Phoenix again. Mm -hmm. And he was introduced and had some things to say about the president. Yes. And when they announced him and introduced him, they didn't just say Dr. Ben Carson, mm -hmm. but they say Secretary of the Department of HUD and yada, yada, yada. Housing yada, and Urban and Development. Housing mm -hmm. and Urban Development. Dr. Ben Carson. Mm -hmm. Well, and Dr. We ben like Carson acknowledged the applause and, and went on to do what he had to do. Mm -hmm. who were of forward, he violated the Hatch Act. The God, exactly. Uh, but what does Trump know about the Hatch Act? Mm -hmm. Former President uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt in 1939 saw that that was, came into law just for times like these to stop federal officials from taking gratuities and doing things on campaigns. And you say, well, what, what can Ben Carson get out of this? Well, he can get another term should Trump get reelected. Mm -hmm. And they said, when, when the press was asked about it, he said, Oh, no, 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 no. His people said, rather, 
uh, it didn't cost the federal government any money. Uh, uh, well, how did he get there? It was paid for out the campaign account. <laughs> they were too dumb to know yes. that that's what it was, the mm. campaign account. So he was campaigning. Exactly. And you but, can't do that. That's a violation, as you mentioned before, of the Hatch Act. Public officials can't uh, campaign uh, for themselves or for others unless they are acting mm -hmm. as an individual mm -hmm. for their campaign, mm -hmm. uh, not using their government position to furtherance of another person's campaign or themselves. Yeah. So, you know, the, the other thing about that is that uh, when you talk about uh, Phoenix and that um, rally, campaign rally that he talked about, not only as far as those two senators that I mentioned, but he also talked about Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, majority leader in uh, the United States Senate. And what he had to say about him put uh, McConnell, Mitch McConnell, on the hot seat in terms of getting their agenda pushed forward, which they come back September 5th, as far as the Congress is concerned, uh, to talk about the debt ceiling, mm -hmm. the uh, what they are calling tax reform. Mm -hmm. I call it uh, uh, Taking tax the money breaks for, yeah, for, for the, the rich, rich. Yeah. Um, and uh, also uh, he's talking about President Trump he's been talking about going back and dealing with uh, the health care issue um, and saying to Mitch McConnell you should get rid of the filibuster mm -hmm. now for those of your viewers who don't mm -hmm. understand what the filibuster is it is a blocking technique where instead of needing a simple majority, mm -hmm. in the case of the United States Senate, we're talking about 51 senators because there are 100 senators, mm -hmm. you would need 60 senators, okay, uh, to have a, a piece of legislation pass. And so, and this is the same way they blocked, talking about the Republicans, mm -hmm. blocked a lot of the legislation that President Obama tried to get through. Including so, the appointment of a Supreme Court justice. Exactly. And so here it is now, um, President Trump wants them to get rid of filibustering. But uh, Mitch McConnell doesn't want to do that because he knows that if that happens, you may get what you want today. But when the other party comes into power, they'll be able to undo everything that you uh, did and then some if, it, if you don't have these rules that will go ahead and curtail a simple majority from being able to go ahead and push through certain legislation. Now, if you have a situation where the president and the majority leader are at each other's throats mm -hmm. about legislation, how are you going to govern this particular country? I agree. How are you going to govern it and keep us afloat? But the president is now saying, like a spoiled kid, I'm going to mm -hmm. take my ball and go home. Right. If I can't get my wall, isn't mm -hmm. this interesting? Very. That he'll see the country shut down. Mm -hmm. He'll see the government shut down before. Now, while that should not even be a part of the discussion. No. Because he has promised every place he's been all over America mm -hmm. that he was going to get a wall. Yes. Now, he brought that up. Yes. And then he says, but don't worry, I'm going to get Mexico to pay for the war. <laughs> now, we've had Mexico is with his second president since he started his campaigning. Mm -hmm. The first one, Fox, said, we ain't going to pay for no war. Right. Forget that. Mm -hmm. The second Mexican president, he went down to Mexico and met with him mm -hmm. before he got into office to assure that he gets his wall, came out and told the press, uh, me and the president on the same page, we agree, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get the wall. But then when they asked the Mexican president, he said, I never said that. Right. And so now he's telling the American people, he's not telling the American people, he's telling the Republican leadership, mm -hmm. forget what I said. I want you to give me the money to do the wall. Mm -hmm. Exactly. $1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. And taking property from people 
along that border, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of eminent domain. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, is that as far as that money is concerned, the president of Mexico, as you mentioned, told him just recently that he's not paying for the wall and, and that Trump got upset with him. Just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Don't have anything to say to the press as far as that. Keep that between you and I. Mm -hmm. So he knows, A, that Mexico does not want to pay for the wall, and B, he's perpetrating a fraud against the people of the United States because he knows that these people are not going to pay for that wall. And why should the Congress go ahead and appropriate money for a wall that he told the world that Mexico is going to pay for? So here we are, again, dealing with this crisis that he has put forward to, and, and the insensitivity that he has as far as shutting down the government is concerned because that means certain people won't get paid. Mm -hmm. We've had in the last eight years two shutdowns of, of the government, and that has led to a lot of hardship for people who depend upon well, Social Security, uh, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, mm -hmm. all these other different things that are happening, you know, you got to step back sometimes and think, am I president of the United States in terms of its totality, that everyone is my constituent instead of just my base? Do I have to get up in front of my base and reconvince them that I am who I say I am and I'm going to do what I said I was going to do every time you get up there? He could have talked about Afghanistan, mm -hmm. right? And the troop uh, 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 um, decision that he made, you know? Because a lot of his people, before he got elected, were told that he was not in favor of increasing troops. Mm -hmm. But you notice he didn't get up there and start talking about that. He railed against the people that those people he knows hate, the mm -hmm. press, mm -hmm. drain the swamp, you know, and including those senators and Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan in, all his favorite targets rather than taking any responsibility himself. The latest knock on the press is that I have more money than reporters. Mm -hmm. Well, almost everybody has more money than reporters. <laughs> so, and he says, and my home is better than a reporter's home. And I got the White House. Mm -hmm. What has that got to do with the ship of state? Exactly. I don't know mm -hmm. where we're going to get to and how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Plus he says he's smarter then he was a number one in his class. But no one can, you know, verify the fact that this is the case. And no one remembers him in school. <laughs> now, you're a bad guy. You must be a bad hombre if nobody re re remembers. Yeah. No one. No one remembers, you know. And, you know, the other part of this, uh, the story that has come out here recently has to do with the Secret Service. He's bankrupted the Secret Service. Isn't that something? Because... He cannot stay in the White House. First, he called it a dump. Exactly. And then when he talks to reporters, well, I'm in the White House. Mm -hmm. And these people are working still for him mm -hmm. in his behalf, yes. covering his family all over the country, even when his family, his son-in-law, mm -hmm. Mr. Kirshner, Yes. And his daughter, his number one daughter, his favorite daughter, mm -hmm. goes on business trips of theirs. They still get Secret Service protection. And these people are owed overtime mm -hmm. that they have not been getting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What will a local police department do if you didn't pay them what you owed them? Stop policing. Exactly. Yeah, they got to pay bills too. They got mortgages. Yeah, you know, they got uh, the electric bill that they got to pay, mm -hmm. gas bill, all mm -hmm. those kind of different things. You can't do that with a wink and a smile, mm -hmm. okay? So the ma fact of the matter is, is that all of what he leaped on President Obama mm -hmm. about how many golf trips that he uh, supposedly took, right? This man has eclipsed 
the record. <laughs> well, As he, he, said. He, had to eclipse, he had to eclipse Obama. Exactly. Jesus. Man, it's too much. So, I mean, here it is again, and, and the mindset of these people. We also had a situation where his treasury secretary and his wife were mm -hmm. flying, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a taxpayer uh, notes, the, notes the fact that, you know, you got all these shopping bags from all these fancy, schmancy uh, 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 department stores and what have you as you're getting off a government plane. Yeah. Okay. $10,000 uh, uh, pocketbooks and what have you hanging off your arm. And... She takes them to task, they're talking about the taxpayer, about the fact that you are doing this. Mm. And she says to this person, well, me and my husband, we uh, pay more in taxes and make more money and have made more sacrifices than you and, and, and anybody else. There's another issue with his family. His number two wife and daughter They have given the State Department, the State Department has received a bill for a rental car mm -hmm. for them for something like uh, $100,000. What, what is that about? Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and so you're letting your ex-wives share in the bounty. In the bounty, in the largesse of the government. But, uh, you know, to, to get back to the situation where we're talking about governance as far as, um, especially when you look at what happened with Charlottesville, mm -hmm. here it is. These people, when I say these people, I'm talking about the neo-Nazis. I'm talking about the white nationalists, the white supremacists, okay? Uh, these people who... Uh, go around um, yelling, uh, what was it, blood mm. and oil? Blood and soil. Soil, I'm sorry, blood and soil. Our blood, our soil. Our soil. And, uh, you know, uh, Jews, you will not replace us. Mm. Marching with um, these tiki... Uh, tiki burning, burning lights. Burning lights <laughs> past, past a synagogue. Uh, and then to have the President of the United States talking about, there are many fine people on both sides. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's, it's mind-boggling. That's, that's the best that I can say about it because here it is. That should be a home run for any president to get up and say, these people, the Nazis, mm -hmm. the fascists, the uh, uh, um, people who uh, perpetuate hate and bigotry are not welcomed here. They should not be here. But well, they are welcome to his cabinet. Uh, as soon as, you know, everybody was applauding that he's gotten rid of Bannon. Mm -hmm. And Bannon, that same day that he left the White House, he sat down at the editorial board meeting, you know. Uh, a Breitbart. A, a Breitbart. Mm -hmm. And says, I got my weapon back now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to war. I'm going to war. It, what does that mean? Yes, exactly. exactly. Who, who's the enemy that he's going to war with? And, and that enemy that he's talking about, in my estimation, are those who op oppose his line of thinking. And you have a situation where, as far as Charlottesville is concerned, people were waiting for the president to be presidential. He was not. And then he goes to a rally, like we were talking about in Phoenix, and tries to clean it all up and omits the things that people were upset with him about as it I just mentioned about the very fine people on both sides. So here it is, we're left in a situation where the credibility of the President of the United States is in question, not even in question. At this point, it's a situation where people don't have, give him any credibility, especially when it comes to uh, race relations. And then he says, as far as the monuments, the Confederate monuments are concerned, that they're trying to take our history and heritage away. Well, who's the they mm -hmm. that he's talking about that wants to go ahead and do this? Basically speaking to, there is the, what he coined the alt-left, mm -hmm. the Antifa, mm -hmm. right, who want to go ahead, and I guess he's trying to make it sound through violent means, uh, to, to go ahead and do these different things um, in, in juxtaposition to the 
um, oh, neo-Nazis. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so here it is, in terms of bringing us together, he's taking the side of people who, in terms of these monuments, now we gotta think about this, mm -hmm. these people, A, rebelled against the United States of America, mm -hmm. and B, fought to perpetuate the enslavement of human beings in the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's the history that he wants to perpetuate and put in people's face. Now, mm -hmm. it could be in a museum. We could talk about these different things so that we could have a discussion. But my child has to walk past those uh, monuments every day. And I, I, one other last thing I want to, in terms of mentioning this thing. A lot of forts, military forts, mm -hmm. in the United States are named after Confederate generals. Mm -hmm. Yet, one of the most prolific generals during the Civil War, Joshua Chamberlain, mm -hmm. is never mentioned yeah. in any fort, okay? Well, he's the wrong color. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just mind-boggling to me that in terms of these situations where he could rise above the situation, he goes below, he goes down mm -hmm. into the gutter as far as I'm concerned in terms of going ahead and leaving some ambiguity, no moral clarity as to where he stands as far as hatred and bigotry is concerned. Because when you make a moral equivalency between uh, the left and the right in that instance where a woman, uh, Heather Heyer, was killed, run down mm -hmm. by a person who um, uh, as far as uh, that uh, protest is concerned, mm -hmm. and you say there's a moral equivalency between the two, you're not living up to the standards of other presidents who have fulfilled their oath of office in th the White House of the United States of America. We are almost to the closing thing, but I'm going to go right back to what you've often said when you're here. Mm -hmm. The only weapon that the masses have is the ballot box. Exactly. And when you sit and wait till everything has been taken from you mm -hmm. and it's all gone, mm -hmm. and then you say, I should have. You better get involved because we're all in this together. Have a great day, Suncoast. You love your couch and want to protect it from spills, food, and scratching, shedding pets. Introducing Couch Coat, the reversible, washable quilted cover that protects your couch. Shield against spills, wow, stop stains, and dirty pet paws and sharp claws. Plus, it's reversible with two stylish colors, guaranteed to fit any couch up to 92 inches or your money back. It even has covers to protect armrests. Machine washable, too. My grandkids destroy everything but with couch coat my couch is always protected looking as good as it did the day I bought it get your couch coat for just $19.99 and it's reversible in brown and cream like two couch coats for the price of one order right now and you can double your offer get a second couch coat just pay a separate fee order right now call 1-800-943-0710 to get your couch coat call now or go to couchcoat.com so call 1-800-943-0710 that's 1-800-943-0710 call now Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com.